Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're all doing good. We are all fine here by the grace of the Almighty. Okay. Today's topic is dismissing grand narratives, the postmodern condition. So today I am up with another critical theory. So now we are in the beginning verge of uh, postmodernism theory. And uh, I'd like to begin it with Jean Francois Lyotard, a French philosopher. Right. So uh, he is a French philosopher and a prominent figure in the intellectual movement of postmodernism. So he characterized the postmodern era as one that has lost faith in all grand totalizing meta narratives. So now uh, several questions will pop up within you. What is a meta narrative? So uh, I'd be explaining it in the upcoming slides. So uh, here, uh, this philosopher, Lyotard, is actually disillusioned with the grandiose or uh, imposing claims of meta narratives, otherwise called as the big stories of uh, uh, the Westerners, right? So such as reason, truth, and progress. So already in the previous video uh, in postmodernism, uh, I have told you that postmodernism is completely against uh, reason, truth, progress, etc., etc. So here, uh, Lyotard is completely disillusioned with the imposing claims of uh, such uh, meta narratives like uh, reason, truth, and progress. So he insists on focusing on the history of everyday life. Why do you have to look back into the past and the and those big uh, Bada meta narratives. Just look into the history of everyday life. Just peep up into uh, the fragmented narratives. So this is the uh, view or perspective of Jean Francois Leo Char. Okay, so here in this picture, you would uh, see the a definition of uh, uh, the postmodernism by Lyotard. What is it? Simplifying to the extreme, I define postmodern as incredulity towards meta narrative. So uh, you'll understand what is incredulity. You'll understand what is meta narratives in the upcoming slides. Okay. So the dual perspective. So uh, this particular text by Lyotard, the postmodern condition, a report on knowledge. So he makes up a, a report on knowledge in the postmodern condition. And uh, it actually moves along two periods. What are those? One being modernity and its adherence to certain meta narratives. So, I told you this particular text, The Postmodern Condition, a report on knowledge, moves along two periods or two perspectives. One is based on meta narratives, and the other is all about the computerization of knowledge that occurred from the 1950s onwards. So, uh, keep something in mind today in this lecture I have concentrated or focused only on this first perspective what is that on meta narratives this one on computerization of knowledge we will deal on the next session right so okay what is a meta narrative now come to the point so it is uh, in postmodernism, it is a big story, a Bada story that claims to explain something totally, not in fragments, right? So, uh, these Westerners, uh, they explain these meta narratives or these big stories totally in its complete form, no fragments, right? So, it may be narratives of historical meaning, experiences or knowledge, right? And it is a dominant grand story. What do you mean by dominant? Something uh, which uh, some kind of a great power exists uh, uh, imposing on some 
minorities right so it is a dominant grand story and who coined the term meta narrative so it is Leo, it was leotard who coined the term meta narrative just to describe the post modern era right so in his particular book the post modern condition a report on knowledge he postulated that the post modern epoch was was characterized by an incredulity towards meta narratives or how the post modern era treated the meta narratives it was treated in an incredulent way i mean an incredulity towards meta narratives was the chief characteristic of post modernism so at this point let me ask you something what do you mean by uh, incredulity is yes? what do you mean by that it is uh, and it is an unwillingness to admit or accept what is offered as true right so oh, it is not credulous we have some kind of a doubt towards it we are skeptical about it or we are doubtful about it so here it is postmodernism is characterized by an incredulity towards meta narrative so a skeptical uh, or a doubtful nature towards meta narrative so the postmodernists are doubtful or skeptical about uh, the credulity of meta narrative so we are not okay with your concept of meta narratives we are doubtful about that you impose that that is true you call it as real but uh, look here we don't believe or trust in your meta narratives anymore we are doubtful about that so this is what postmodernism is exactly about okay so anti authoritarianism so post modernism it actually emphasizes pluralism right and it rejects any certain belief and absolute value see if you people you call it uh, call your meta narratives as true or it is uh, very much uh, authentic or you call it to be valuable or if you want us to believe that see look here i am not any more ready to value it i don't think it is authentic right so postmodernism rejects any certain belief of absolute value right we don't believe in that and uh, postmodernism practices anti authoritarianism says leotard what is that what is anti authoritarianism a refusal to recognize the authority of any single style or definition of what art should be if you impose on us that uh, art should be like this exactly like this see i am not going to accept that i'm going to refuse that right so if someone is telling you see for uh, making this uh, gravy you have to cut these vegetables only in this shape so, uh, people might have followed the same step uh, for generation after generation yeah we have to cut brinjal only in this particular shape so suddenly you're going and uh, dismantling everything no 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 i'll cut my vegetables in the desired shape that i want this is not real or this is not authentic i am going to do it in a different way how do you call this to be very much authentic i can't accept this i'm going to refuse it so this is what we call as anti authoritarianism and postmodernism especially our leotard he refuses to recognize any kind of an authority of any single style okay you can't impose only this particular style or definition we can't define anything in this particular way of how this particular art should be i'm go not going to accept it so that's his stand on um, uh, such things uh, such concepts in postmodernism so he also emphasizes on the collapsing of the distinction between high culture and mass or popular culture and between art and everyday life so uh, leotard doesn't believe in the so called high culture right 
So he doesn't believe in these artistic uh, stuffs uh, exact with those exact definitions and styles. So he uh, emphasizes on the mass or popular culture and he insists on histories or petit or little histories of everyday life. So I uh, hope you understood. Now, rejecting true ground. So, Leotard is actually suspicious or skeptical about all grounds of truth or proof, right? So, uh, these scientists, technicians, instruments of uh, the modern era, which augmented power, he says, doesn't find the exact truth. He, he tells that he calls it to, uh, calls it as an issue of power. Right. So he also insists that these dominant discourses exercises terror. Right. So as I told you before, uh, it was as a result of World War Two, uh, World War Two, and uh, genocide acts that uh, happened as a result of uh, uh, a modern world. Right. So postmodernism distances itself from the centralizing effect of knowledge. Okay. We are fed up with your knowledge. You say that exactly th these things should be like this. You have uh, so uh, the so-called proofs and you want us to believe that. So, uh, But we are not going to follow that exact style or definition that you have insisted to follow, right? So it is that uh, it is like distancing ourselves from the centralizing effect of knowledge. So it keeps away from the hierarchical po politics and uh, religious movements, right? So we don't follow your hierarchical politics. We don't want to follow your religious movements in which you have exercised your power. So the demise or the collapse of Grant's histoids or the grand histories okay so the postmodern era is exactly marked by the demise of grand histories or the so called meta narratives so uh, grand narratives are the quintessential or typical features of modernity right so lyotard criticizes this grand narrative and exposes its demise to be a feature of postmodern movement so postmodern movement is uh, exactly marked by the demise of the grand narrative or the grand histories that uh, we were imposed to follow all these years right okay so uh, what do you think are the examples of grand narratives? So, on the uh, a very basic idea is that the grand narrative is usually linked to the mainstream or status quo or existing status state of affairs. It has nothing to do with. Uh, the uh, fragmented histories of people i mean the fragmented history of people other than the westerners so some examples of the grand narrative in the modern world are as follows so capitalism postmodernism is against capitalism it is completely uh, against the enlightenment age otherwise called the age of reason actually this uh, enlightenment age was an intellectual and philosophical movement that dominated the world of ideas in europe during the 17th and 18th centuries so uh, it uh, fo uh, focused on uh, uh, reason and experiments and experiences and uh, these are the examples of grand narratives right uh, and some other example is christian ideology which was uh, 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 so certainly believed by the Westerners. And then comes Freud in psychology, political democracy, natural science, patriarchal order. These are the examples of grand narratives by the Westerners. Right. So outside of these narratives comes the other petty micro narratives, which gains no play, no place in the mainstream outside. 
others got it so all cultures both ancient and moderns uh, legitimate themselves by the constant repetition of their narratives and big stories so how does these grand narratives become meta narratives how come it uh, flows in the mainstream it's all by the constant repetition yes okay so the process is very much repetitive so this makes their narratives big big stories and it makes them more legitimate so the more and more they are repeated the more and more legitimate or authentic they become right so these are the examples of grand narratives okay so what are those so called big stories right what are those big stories so this big story is concerned with the european enlightenment right it showcases rationalism the age of reason empowers it empiricism knowledge based on experiments and experiences right so progress so the westerners uh, uh, have completely uh, it has imposed on the others that they have brought progress to the world see we people we people who belong to the west have brought progress to the entire world on the basis of our reason and rationalism yes and cosmopolitanism yeah so these are the big stories of european enlightenment so in other words the progress of the west so highlighting the age of reason and iconizing the west to be the best so the rest of the world so you don't uh, mean uh, you don't uh, what do you say come to the mainstream we are the best so the westerners are iconized right so they are the age of reason uh, is highlighted and uh, they were iconized to be the best so the rest of the narratives of the world exposed to be the petty other so what about the rest you may ask but the answer is they are just the petty other so the smaller stories were unfairly stacked right so they were not arranged properly they were unfairly stacked here and there not flowing up or going up towards the mainstream so the heroic quest that was the impression given by the european so the west says we bring freedom through democracy and reason so why are we the best why are we called as heroes or why do, uh, why are we termed as heroic we have brought freedom through democracy and reason so uh, examples are meta narratives are of marxism and christianity says leotard so leotard himself being a, a marxist later due to various reasons he was against that against marxism and uh, he proposes marxism and christianity to the to be the examples of two of the examples of meta narratives right so so he tells that without faith and trust right so without faith and trust in these meta narratives or without retelling and iconizing the same it would have little effect on the people so uh, what he tells us the more faith and trust is imposed upon these meta narratives through repetitions right so they they were repeated again and again retelling of these meta narratives and their power again and again made gave them or uh, put them up in a higher place and he tells that without all these uh, efforts uh, it would have just little or minor effects on the people this is uh, uh, this is what leo tort feels about meta narratives right so did you question the dominant big story so what happens uh, if you question the dominant big story so everything will be okay uh, uh, till you keep ma so you 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 will be believing uh, every uh, meta narrative of every sorts okay you will be okay with uh, everything uh, proposed there and uh, what will happen when you start questioning the dominant big story when you raise your doubts what will happen so 
are you questioning the story of your ancestors so uh, are you skeptical to the practices of democracy and science that promises freedom to everyone okay do you still uh, believe all the stories of your ancestors are you doubtful about the practices of democracy and science that actually promises freedom to everyone do you believe that right so if you are not believing that and if you are questioning those concepts are uh, the you will be deemed as a deviant so then you are a deviant what do you mean by a deviant yeah look at this uh, picture you will be thrown out as an outsider yes you are a dangerous outsider now why because you uh, questioned everyone right you questioned your ancestors you are skeptical about the practices of uh, uh, democracy and science uh, that the westerners offered claiming uh, to give or offer freedom to everyone you are doubtful about that so now you are exactly a deviant yeah you are termed or deemed to be a deviant and you are a very perilous outsider you are completely dangerous and you threaten the safety of your clan so what happens is you will be thrown out of your clan so this is what happens when you question okay so don't get uh, horrified by this uh, image uh, i just uh, made this on my own for uh, making things uh, clear for you so in the center we could see the dominant narrative so it flows in the mainstream and uh, it occupies the central space and it is uh, completely it imposes the its claims on others uh, using various strategies like uh, reason truth reality all such uh, stuff okay uh, so this is the dominant meta narrative and uh, outside this dominant meta narrative you could uh, see various patterns and shapes what are these these are micro narratives just for uh, what do you say uh, making the concept more understandable i have put up this so you could find the patterns are different so they look very small than this dominant meta narrative these are very very small and uh, these small images represent the micro narratives along the margin which gains no prominent place in the center they are put outside they are different in their patterns and style and they are not complete in its forms right so they are fragmented and uh, they are put outside and termed as the other so these all these small figures are nothing other than micro narratives hope now you would have understood the difference between the dominant meta narrative and the uh powerless micro narratives well so the end of the meta narrative so uh, how come the meta narrative came to an end right just because of the horrors of world war 2 and because of genocide so now uh it led to counter cultural spaces right so uh, questioning the grand story of the western progress so people were fed up especially leotard was very much fed up about these uh, uh, concepts of or uh, stories of western progress so he very clearly questions the brutality of the west and leotard dismisses the grand narratives as violent and tyrannical as it imposes totalizing pattern so he uh, highlights that leotard highlights that i don't any more believe in these uh, totalizing patterns i just believe in fragmented patterns right so uh, this marks the end of the meta narrative and uh, the emergence of petit histoires what does it mean petit or little or small histories right so uh, this is what we call as micro narratives so hope you remember the image so uh, these are local fragmented or native narratives it is not western right and it is very much partial and incomplete 
and something about uh, micro narratives is that it resists the dominance of overarching patterns so the dominance of the meta narratives that surpasses its limits right and fragmentations holds a prominent place in postmodernism so postmodernism's uh, key feature is fragmentation okay so socio cultural context of postmodernism and it is counter culture so the term counter culture refers to a group or movement that espouses norms ideas and values that are different from those of the time periods dominant culture so every culture has our every society has its own dominant culture and if someone uh, follow uh, deviates from that they'd be called a deviant right so here uh, it counterculture refers to a particular movement that deviates from certain norms and ideas and values that were imposed earlier by the dominant culture right so new cultural forms are evolved for example uh, here we have a culture of sending students uh, to school for education but we could see that in certain cities uh, practices of uh, keeping children back at home and the parents itself rear them and educate them and only for the 10th public exam they they'll be uh, writing the exam and but otherwise they'll be getting all sorts of education back at home uh, under the scrutiny of their parents so now new cultural forms are evolving right so uh, this is just an example i'm telling you right so why can't we uh, be different why why do we have to follow the dominant culture so that's the question here right so it celebrated this new counter culture or the movement of counter culture celebrated experimentation see why should i follow what you have imposed on us why can't i try something new why can't i experiment something new why should i follow the same path i can't follow your dominant system anymore and it is completely anti authoritarianism right anti anti authoritarian right so uh, the place of uh, women uh, in the modern society is uh, one of the claim i would say right so uh, so many uh, 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 activists uh, they uh, deviate from the mainstream culture to focus on something new right so playing with pieces this is this is all about postmodernism playing with fragmented or incomplete pieces so postmodernism is just a playful engagement with conflicting micro narratives see these micro narratives can be very much conflicting it is not it doesn't give you a totalizing effect it questions the grand meta narratives giving space to alternate micro narratives right and uh, uh, the dominance of the wealthy western nations or resisted the supreme western meta narrative is questioned and the basic imperative of postmodern politics so uh, therefore it is to create communities in which the integrity of different language games is respected so it's not all about westerners and their sole english language so this is a play where integrity of different language games is encouraged and respected communities <coughs> based on heterogeneity conflict and dissensus right so this is all about postmodernism what is that playing with pieces that too playing with fragmented pieces so now let me ask you a question why is postmodernism difficult right so postmodernism is very much hard to define because it is a concept that appears in a wide variety of disciplines right it's not just about art or literature it includes architecture music uh, film literature sociology communications fashion and technology so it is a bit to define it very clearly but still uh, i hope to give you more videos on postmodernism to make it simple 
and uh, I don't want to complicate the terms, right? So I have uh, tried to simplify it as far as I can. So thank you so much uh, for listening very much patiently. Those who haven't uh, subscribed it, do subscribe and uh, watch. And uh, please uh, press the bell icon for uh, further uh, information on uh, uh, updated videos. And uh, do follow our uh, Facebook page and the link is uh, put up in the description box below. Thank you so much.